Living in the Netherlands, where it rains about half the year, we know a thing or two about going green. But going green is not about the color of your environment. It's about being proactive and taking the measures in your daily life that will help protect that environment. And we can learn a thing or two from the Dutch in that department. My name is Tom, and I'd like to introduce you to my family, who will help explain to you how we've struggled in going green in this new environment and culture that surround us. This is Anne, my wife, and my two daughters, Zoe and Molly. We also provide a home to a number of fish, a new kitten, three sheep, and a variety of local birds, bugs, and small mammals. Living in a small and densely populated country, the people of the Netherlands are going green with gusto. We're required to turn in all hazardous materials, all plastic packaging, cans, bottles, and paper, as well as old clothing. All of our biodegradables go into a green trash can, and everything left over that's not recycled goes into a black can. Also, many of our bottles have deposits, and it can be a challenge figuring out if they go back to the store on our American base, a Dutch store, or across the German border, less than a mile away. Hey, what are you doing? Doing the recycling, taking the bottles back. Separate them first by country. These are the corrosive hazmat, and these need to be returned as well. We can't throw these away. Have to be recycled. How do you feel about re going green? In theory, it's great. It's just when it comes to all the bottles and having to return them all to different places, it's a little bit of a pain. But it's worth it in the end. So I do it. It'd be nice if I had a little help, though. The task of turning in the recyclables that go to our American Sorting Center generally falls to Anne because she works nearby. We also had to unlearn the common practice of warming up your car on cold days. This is frowned upon, and in Germany you can even be fined for idling in one spot for more than three minutes. We tend to limit bike use to recreation. The kids' school and my work is only four miles away, but unless you take a long detour, the road there can be quite treacherous. This must be the only road in Holland that still lacks a bike path. Now I'd like to let the kids tell you a little bit how they feel about going green. Right now it's not affecting me personally because I don't pay for gas, and I don't pay any taxes, and I don't drive, But it I affect take out the trash. See? That's what those people... It's, right now, it's not affecting me personally. That's what the people thought, and then they just polluted the environment, because they're like, oh, it's not affecting me. I don't all. litter. I don't do anything against the environment. <laughs> you just don't do anything to help it. Yeah, I do. I mean, we're not going to stop heating our homes. No one's going to stop heating their homes for a polar bear. Even if Michael Moore tells them to. I think that not only should we uh, try not to hurt the environment anymore, like a lot of people, they're not using as much energy and they're making sure they turn lights off, but we should also like help it, like plant trees and do other stuff like that. It's going to be our job to find the alternate fuel resources. It's going to be our job to fix the hole in the ozone layer since none of the older generation is doing anything. I mean, they're trying to stop it, but they started too late. They already did the damage, and now we're gonna have to deal with it, my generation. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of this family's struggles going green. Okay. We know there's a lot more we can do if we take the time and apply the effort. We have a beautiful world all around us, and although it's sometimes inconvenient, we recognize it's important to share this world with our fellow creatures and preserve it for those who will follow.